Hey, what's up guys, this is Marcos. Today we're gonna take a look at how to use the hue and saturation curves within the new Final Cut Pro X 10.4 update. Now, if you've been following along with this channel, you've probably seen my tutorials on how to use the color wheels and the color curves, um, but I wanted to reserve this one, the hue and saturation curves tutorial to the very last because it's a little bit more complicated and you probably need to know, be aware of color wheels and curves in order to uh, play around with the hue and saturation curves. This tool is very powerful. There's a lot of curves that you need to be aware of. So I'm gonna show them to you and primarily, primarily I'm gonna focus on how to use them to correct for skin tone, which is one of the primary things you should worry about whenever you're doing color grading. Your skin tones are probably the most important thing because it determines whether you have a good or a bad color grade. I'm also gonna talk a little bit about applying LUT, which is very simple. It's also a new feature available within the 10.4 update. So, you know, that, I'm just gonna brush over that, but I'm gonna primarily focus on the skin tones. And then secondly, I'm gonna talk about how to do color shifts and a little bit of, uh, of that. So without further ado, let's get into it. All right, so here we are in a project I recently worked on. This has already been color graded. As you can see here, I have the effects, the color effects, I'm gonna turn them off. And you can see this is a uh, flat log footage and I already applied some color grading. I applied some color wheels, which if you, if you don't know how to play with color wheels, I have a link or a card here that you can check out so you can learn how to use color wheels. And then I haven't talked about LUT, but it's pretty simple. You just uh, go to the color tab here under the uh, effects and drop in the custom LUT to your footage or to a custom or to this adjustment layer, which I made. If you want that, it will be in the description. And you get this box here. You can load uh, custom LUTs. Uh, I like to use this one right here. And usually I apply them anywhere from 30 to 50% the mix or this opacity. Uh, anyways, let's go ahead over to the hues and saturation curves. You should know that whenever I color grade, my primary focus is always to get the skin tones right. Because if, let, let's say you start applying LUTs and all kinds of crazy corrections, if your skin tones are off, your, your color grade is gonna look really bad. So I always make sure that my skin tones is right and I do that by First of all, drawing a mask around my skin. That way I'm always checking my scope. So command seven to choke your, check your scopes. I go to my vector scope and I always check the skin tone line. This is the skin tone line. Our, our skin tone is supposed to lie along this line right here. Now you can see right now it, it's a line. Now if I remove this first hue and saturation curve, you can see the line goes off, meaning that my skin tone now is off. It's not correct or it's not accurate. So let's remove the mask. And as you can see, this is uh, the, the uh, color grade without this hue and saturation curve. Now, if we apply it back, you can see now the skin tones look more natural. Before it was looking yellowish and I applied this hues and saturation curves and now I fixed that skin tone issue. So anyways, let, let me uh, start from the beginning. I'm gonna uncheck these and apply a new hue and saturation curves and show you how I fix the skin tones. So let's apply this to uh, the adjustment layer. Here we have the hue and saturation curves. Now, before we get started, I wanna make sure I'm only affecting my face, my skin. Um, so I'm gonna add a mask a shape mask and I'm gonna place this around my face, just my face, so it only affects this area. There we go, now let's start making some corrections. Let's go in here. And the first line we have here is a hue versus hue. This is a, a primary line, the, the primary curve I use to fix my skin tones. Now, if we take this uh, eyedropper tool and we drag it along our skin, that way we can get a sample of where our skin lies, can see it made some anchor points now let's bring up my uh the scopes again and actually let's turn on the draw mask again that way we can isolate just the skin tones we want to make sure we move the skin tones towards the skin tone line so again let's go back to the hues and saturation curves here is uh, the point where my skin tone line so if i drag this down it actually makes it worse so i gotta drag up and there, I aligned the skin tones along the skin tone line. I can actually bring this a little bit more up. It's too much, there we go. I think that's about right. Um, now let's look at our skin again. 
back to the effects. Let me uncheck the draw mask. Let's compare before and after the correction. So that's looking much better, but I think still my, my skin tones need a little bit of correction. I think it's too bright. Um, I like to give myself a little bronze, so let's do that. Let's go back to the hues and saturation curves. Now, I'm going to skip over the hues versus sat because usually I don't use it whenever I'm fixing uh, skin tones. I like to use a hue versus luma. Again, let's take the, the eyedropper and drag it along our skin tones. That way it only uh, uh, makes anchor points around our skin tones. Here's a primary line where our skin tone lies. So I'm going to drag this down to decrease the hue, the, uh, the luminance of my skin. The, basically, this line just increases or decreases luminance, the luminance of certain colors. So I want to decrease it. And that's it, just a little bit. And, and it just gave me a little bit of a bronze. That's it. It just decreased the luminance of the skin. So pretty simple, right? There's nothing much to it. Now, if I hadn't applied this, this uh, shape mask to my face, let me show, it, show you again. If I hadn't applied that, it would also affect this bag right here and this toolbox. Why? Because the bag and the toolbox have red and orange in them. So it would have naturally affect them. So I don't want that. That's why I applied the mask. All right. So let's add another hues and saturation curves. And now I want to remove some of the saturation from this orange bag because um, personally, I think it's drawing too much attention to itself. I want the attention to remain here. Uh, so how do we do that? Again, let's add another shape mask because we only want it to affect the bag itself. So let me uh, reshape this. Okay, there we go. Now let's go in here to the hues and saturation curves. Now I went over here versus hue and hue versus luma. Uh, now the hue versus hue versus saturation is how I would, what I would use to decrease the saturation of this bag because that's ultimately what I want. So let's drag over this bag. It tells us it's right here. This is where the the bag lies. The colors lie. You know, bring down the saturation, and that looks good. I think if we uncheck this, just a little bit, so we're not our eyes are not drawn to this bag. And I can do also do the same. For this toolbox, for the sake of the tutorial, I'm not going to do it. All right, so now let, let me show you the other um, curves, which I don't use as often, but you should know about them. Uh, the first one is the Luma versus Saturation. Now, this is what you would use if there was some weird color cast in your shadows or your highlights, primarily your shadows. Your shadows meaning those dark parts, like, like the wall, which is dark. So what I could do is take this uh, eyedropper, drag it over my wall and then decrease the saturation of, of the, of the walls. That way, if there's like a bluish or a purple or whatever kind of color cast in my shadows, we just get rid of it. Now it's just uh, pure black. That's what I want. You can do that with, with the highlights, but I choose not to because I pointed a blue light on, on my back, uh, here on my back door. So I'm not interested in that. So usually I just desaturate the shadows, but it's a good idea to also do it with your highlights. You can do something like that. Uh, now the saturation versus saturation is something that, again, I don't use often. Actually, I haven't used that at all. But basically, you can saturate the least saturated parts of your image, which is the left hand side. And you can also shift the saturation of your most saturated parts of your image, which is the right hand side. And if you drag up, you saturate the, the, the least saturated parts of your image. If you drag down this side, the right-hand side, you desaturate the most, the most saturated parts of your image. So it's kind of like creating a balance in, sap, in saturation. I hope that makes sense. Um, now, the orange versus saturation is, again, something that I don't use. But, uh, you know, you can tweak the colors, the orange versus sad is supposed to affect the skin tones, but I haven't really used it because I like to use a hue versus hue whenever I'm playing around with the skin tones. So that's basically a rundown of the hue versus saturation curves. Again, I would stick to the hue versus hue, hue versus luma, I think are the most important ones. So that's pretty much it. So I don't want to get too fancy with them. Uh, I think 
primarily whenever you're color grading, focus on your skins, making sure that they remain accurate. Uh, after you're done, always triple check that skin tones are along the skin tone lines, okay? So there you have it. That's how you do basic skin corrections using the hue and saturation curves. Also how you do color shifts and use masks uh, to make sure you don't affect other parts of your images or colors in your other parts of your you know images. Um, please let me know if I wasn't clear about anything. If you have any questions, comments, drop them down below. If you found this video useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Um, if you haven't already subscribed, please go ahead and do so because I'm making videos like this every week, all right? So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.